Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourself, all those kind of things. Um, if you're new here, I'm Jim. Nice to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here on YouTube every week where I dive into various editing programs and uh, show you how to use the capabilities of the product, share tips and tricks, that kind of stuff. I'm really all about exploring creativity and trying to take a photo from what it is to what I want it to be. Uh, and that's what I'm all about. So today I'm in Luminar 4. I've got a photo here. This was Leadenhall Market shot in London. Absolutely beautiful place. As you can see, the white balance is off and that sort of thing. And what I want to do is control specific parts of the image. And today in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how I do that using radial masks. I've talked about luminosity masks quite a bit recently, and I think people have uh, you've got a lot of questions about masking. So I'm going to do radial masks because they're an equally capable and uh, unique and, and interesting and powerful tool in Luminar 4. So let's take a look at this photo. Here it is before and here it is after. What I'm trying to do here is control the colors, control the focal area, control the light, control the detail, and radial, mass, uh, radial masks help me do that. Let me hit reset and we'll dive into this workflow right now. Okay, so here we are, base layer, no edits, just completely untouched. Usually what I do when I have a photo like this and I know I wanna draw the viewer's attention down that, radial mass will come into play. And also, um, if I know I wanna control the light and color and things like that a little bit differently in certain areas, radial mass come into play. But what I usually do is start with the light tool. In this case, I'm gonna take the temperature down quite a bit. I think I went to like 67, 68. Let me check my notes, yeah. Uh, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of smart contrast that's gonna be about an 18, something like that. And as you can see, that's gonna darken the image quite a bit. So I'm gonna bring the shadows up. Looking at my notes here, that's about a 29. So not a massive difference, but uh, you know you can tell, right? So very yellow, the white balance. I mean, this it is kind of yellowy gold. And then with the lights and all that, it just really comes off yellow. And this is a personal bias. I just don't like that look. There's nothing wrong with it. It kind of looks like that, but I don't remember it being that yellow. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit more balanced in terms of color and the temperature slider really helps me do that. So when I'm using a radial mask, I'll often do some really simple basic adjustments like that and then start getting into the masking. So I'm gonna go masking now. I'm gonna start with a new layer. And this is what I do with radial mask often is because I'll know that certain parts of the photo, I wanna have certain things done and I wanna maybe do opposite or different things in other parts of the photo. And if you know the shape is kind of ovally or circle, that's where radial mask comes in. So let me show you, I'm gonna start with a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna go ahead and add the mask first. Um, I've had people ask me this about luminosity masking where I'll go do a bunch of edits and then apply a luminosity mask. That's often how I do it. But with the radial mask, I'll generally apply the, uh, the mask first because I definitely want to isolate the shape of the area. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm not going to say edit mask. Yeah, I am. Edit mask and radial mask. And then what you do is, as you can see, it says click and drag to draw a circle. So you just draw a circle um, and that's gonna create your mask. Now, you have the ability to come in here and do things like this where you can change the shape. You can extend that to extend this zone. The zone, I call this the gradient zone. Um, that inner circle, everything inside of that is gonna get all of the masking or none. You can invert it. I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, between this first line and that outer line, it's kind of a gradient, it kind of fades. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There you go. You can see the way a radial mask is built, it defaults to affecting the outside of the circle. I generally am every time gonna invert it because I want the mask to do the, um, not every time actually, I should take that back. I usually start with doing it inverted because I wanna get to the in inside, but this is a good way to show you what I mean by gradient. None of the effect is taking place in this inner circle. And in this outer circle, it's a very small amount here close to this line and it gradually increases as you get to the outer line and then you get the full effect outside of that. I wanna invert that and make it the opposite. So that's what I just did. And now I wanna just control this area. So I'm gonna mess with the shape a little bit and that's what you can do. And you know, again, this all comes down to taste. Um, I kind of want to, not kind of, I do want to focus the viewer's attention down the street here, for lack of a better word. By the way, you can see that bottom line is actually dropping off. That's okay. Um, I'm going to leave it about, I don't know, probably about like that. This is a demonstration. So I'm going to say done. My radial mask is now in place. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm going to go into the light tool. Once again, I'm going to drop the temperature 
And I've got to look at my notes while I'm doing this. So I went about negative 29. That's really cooling that off, but I just like the look. Um, so next is going to be an exposure increase of about 0.2 or so. And that is basically brightening that center area. Now I'm going to go to AI Enhance and use AI Accent. And I'm going about halfway here. I'm going to about 50. So I'm very much brightening that center area. And as you can tell, because that's brightened and the outer part is not brightened, it's kind of a little bit um, like using inner light on the vignette tool. If you don't know about that, I've got a video about vignette. But um, I'm doing a very similar thing here. But I'm doing all these focused on that center area. So I don't really need the vignette. And I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, next up is AI structure. And this is me cranking up the detail a little bit within that uh, oval shape because, again, I'm focusing you down. I want to have your eye just go straight down the street. So I'm creating a little bit more detail, a little bit more brightness there. And then I'm going to do kind of the opposite um, in the other areas. Over here, I'm going to give the vibrance a bump. Let's say about 24 or something like that. Just, again, just kind of popping that. You're more likely drawn to bright stuff that's colorful, right? So that's kind of what I'm doing. Uh, and then I'm going to go over here to dramatic. And I'm going to add that at about a 20 or 21. And that's just, again, kind of cranking up that detail in that area just a little bit. So let me go over here and show you. You can see the mask is illustrated in this little section here. Remember, black conceals and white reveals. So where it's black, any edits that you make are concealed or hidden. And where it's white, any um, edits that you make are revealed or shown. So you can see it's a kind of an oval shape. Um, I wish you could make this bigger, but you can't. But of course, you can always click on brush mask. And you can always click on, there I lost my mouse, click on that eyeball and that will show you where your mask is. So if you need to do that, you can do that. But I'm going to hit done. I'm pretty much done with this layer. I've done what I wanted inside that area. So now I'm going to use the opposite. I'm going to focus on the outside. So you could go create the mask again, but it's easier just to copy it. So I'm going to say mask, copy. I'm going to add a new layer, new adjustment layer. I'm going to come over here and say mask and paste and there you go i've got the same mask duplicated on this layer however i want the opposite of that so i've got to go back into that menu and say click on that and say mask and say invert and you will notice the whites and blacks here have basically flip flops so i'm going to click on brush just to show you i'm going to highlight the mask and you can see the red area or pink whatever color that is um, that's the area where all the edits i do on this layer are going to take place and they're not going to affect the area that's not uh, painted in that red, right? So in other words, I'm going to work on the outside of the frame versus the center, which is what I did on the previous layer. So I'm going to come over here and get into my tools and get going. Okay, so first thing is light. Once again, I'm taking the temperature down. This time I'm doing about 47, just kind of cooling it off. And I'm making it purposefully a, a different sort of temperature than what's in the center because I'm trying to darken it and soften it up and change the temperature. And I think the red yellow kind of brighter colors are going to draw your eye more. So I'm kind of dropping that temperature here. I'm going to go contrast of about uh, 23, it looks like, in my notes here. I'm going to take the exposure down. I skipped that about a, a negative, uh, about a third or so. Uh, and I'm going to take the shadows down as well. So again, going back to my comment a minute ago on the previous layer, I'm basically creating a vignette because I'm increasing contrast, dropping shadows, and dropping exposure outside the frame, I'm saying outside the frame, outside that center. And so if I can show you this already, what I've done, I've taken this layer from that to that. It's cooler, it's darker. So it's kind of like a vignette, but I'm gonna do additional things outside of in that area. So um, that's why it makes sense to use a radial mask instead of just using a vignette. Okay, ne next is AI structure, and I'm gonna go negative here. I'm gonna do like a negative 62. And I'm going to boost it like 32, I think. Yeah, 32. So this is simply me just kind of softening up, creating a little bit of a blur. And so this is, um, in some ways, I think of this as like a dreamy look that you would see in a film where like maybe somebody's looking around and maybe they're half awake or actually dreaming. And like some things are clear and other things are kind of out of focus. This is that out of focus area. And again, this is me trying to draw your eye down the street where it's brighter, it's warmer, it's more detailed uh, and more colorful. So over here, it's going to be the opposite of that, right? It's less you know, less structure, less detail, less color, less light, uh, and cooler. So I'm just basically doing the opposite of what I did on the previous layer. 
So uh, over here in color, I'm gonna take this down just a little bit. I don't wanna make a massive imbalance in the uh, temperature and, and colors and all that kind of stuff. I'm just, again, just trying to soften it up and change things. Um, you could also come over here to the red. Uh, let me click on red, there it goes. And because there's a fair amount of red and yellow, you could come over here and take that saturation down and maybe drop that luminance um, and bring that down. Maybe try the same with the orange if you wanted to bring that luminance down. And, and you can see, because there's a fair amount of those colors in that area, it's kind of darkening them because I'm dropping the luminance of those specific colors. So I'll just leave that. I think it looks fine. Again, I think it helps accentuate the look that I'm going for. Um, now I'm gonna go over here and get mystical. Um, not dramatic, mystical, here we go. And I'm gonna go about 18 or so there. And mystical creates a little bit of that moody shadow feeling. And I'm gonna next do the same thing with Orton, a very small amount, like five or six or seven, something like that. Both of those tend to just add a little bit of contrast and shadow, they darken some areas and just create a little bit of mood, which again, it's all that I'm going for. So let me show you what this layer has done for me. There's the before, much brighter, much warmer, more clear in terms of its, um, you know, being in focus, much warmer, things like that. And now after this, I've darkened it, I've changed the temperature, made it cooler basically, which to me, cooler is kind of darker, right? You think of shadows as being cooler and highlights as being warmer. Generally, I kind of think that way. Um, so I've basically softened it up, reduced the color intensity and the color luminance, uh, done all those things to basically darken it and um, soften up the image. So here, now keep in mind, let me back up. I'm looking at it now and I'm looking at this center area and I'm like, you know, it could be a little bit brighter. So there's two things you could do. You could go over here to adjustment layer one, which is the layer focused on that section. You come over here, you go back to AI enhance and you could say, hey, 50 is not enough. Maybe how about a 70? Um, you know, you could do something like that. Um, I'm gonna put that back. You could go into the light tool and you could say, hey, exposure 19 is not enough. Maybe I need to, um, go to you know 60 or something so i'm gonna go back wherever i was let's just call it 19. Uh, i'm gonna do something different and that is i'm gonna turn this other layer back on and i'm gonna add a new adjustment layer and i was gonna do this anyway because one thing i noticed i really don't like about this photo i'm gonna go into color and i'm gonna get the blue so i'm gonna click click on that go into blue i'm gonna take the saturation of the blue down quite a bit um, i'm gonna take that down to what did I do? I went about negative 50. And I'm gonna say edit mask and brush. And now I'm just gonna paint that negative blue in right there. It was just getting too blue for me, right at that building at the end of the hallway, if you will. So if I turn that off and you look, you can see it's really blue. And you know that's based on all my temperature edits that I did on that previous layer with the, uh, the first radial mask. Um, it just made them too blue. So I wanted to come back and um, you know, I needed that because I was dropping the temperature in the whole area, which was a counterbalance to the really yellowy orange red and trying to cool that off. But it caused those areas, which were a little bit blue to start with, to get really blue. So I fixed that there. Now, having said that, I might come in here and use the vignette tool to brighten that center. Now, I don't wanna add a vignette, so you can, and I've done this in previous videos, if you wanna use inner light, I, I mean, I can drag that to 100, and it's not gonna do anything, and the reason why is because amount is at zero. So you can take amount, and you can say negative one, and then you start dragging inner light, and that will work. And what I've basically done is a negative one in vignette is basically turning it on right? At zero, no amount, it says, well, I don't, I don't recognize an inner light because I'm not turned on. So you kind of switch it on with a positive or negative one. doesn't really matter because it's a one. Um, so it's not really impacting the sort of vignette effect that I had with the radial mask on that last layer, but it is sort of turning it on and giving, the, uh, giving me the ability to pop that inner light. And if I wanted to, I could say choose subject and I could drop it a little lower in the frame which is what I want to do. In fact, um, hang on, I'm gonna go a little bit lower. I'm gonna go like here. Um, and that's because the vignette, it's gonna default to the very center of the photo, which is gonna be more like this light here. And I wanted the center that I'm brightening to be more focused in this lower area. So if I really go crazy, you can see it's gonna brighten that a lot. I don't wanna do too much. I just wanna give it a little pop, so maybe a 30. And let me show you the before. There you go, a bit darker in that area and after a bit brighter and does not really affect the vignette effect that I created with the radial mask on the previous layer because I went to negative one. So 
That is how I use radial masks. Let me show you the before and after. Yellow, you know, the temperature is really just, I think, terrible. Again, personal opinion, simply because I like yellows in sunsets or like a lion. Uh, not that I shoot them, but whatever. Um, I like sun, uh, sunsets and those kind of colors, golden hours to have some of the yellows, but street scenes and architecture and stuff, I just don't like it. Personal preference, nothing wrong if you like it, that's fine. But for me, I wanted to get rid of that. And I think I did a fine job. And the radial mask allowed me to separately control the different parts of the photo that I wanted to focus on. The first one being the kind of core area and that oval shape really helps me kind of set the viewer's eye down the path here. And then the inverse of that radial mask on the next layer allowed me to really do some things in the outer where I was able to soften up the details, darken it, change the colors and all that kind of stuff. And again, the nice thing is I could always go back. I could go back to this layer and darken it more or reduce structure and boost even more to get an even softer, more dreamy effect. But once you set them up and have them in place, you can go back and customize them all you want um, with, with your edit sliders, right? So that's how I do it, my friends. There's before and after, and one more time, there's the slider. And that's how I use a radial mask to control different parts of my image. And it works really well on these kind of photos where you have a specific thing, perhaps in the distance. Um, but there's a lot of other uh, applications for radial mask. If you're interested in more, I can come back and do more videos, but I wanted to share this with you. Thanks for watching. Hope you're doing well. Give me a like if you haven't yet, and please subscribe to the channel. I'll be back soon with more videos. Take care, my friends. I hope you're doing well. I'll see you soon, and adios.